Hello, Dr. Dyke Drummond here at the home of TheHappyMD.com in beautiful Seattle, Washington. Welcome to the latest episode of the Physicians on Purpose podcast. Tools so you can recognize and prevent your own burnout. Stories of burnout put to its highest and best use and wellness leadership strategies. Everything you need to be a physician on purpose. Hello again, Dr. Dyke Drummond here with the latest edition of the Physicians on Purpose podcast coming to you from beautiful Seattle, Washington, top left in the USA. And today my guest is Dr. Stephen Waldron, a family doc and an informaticist from the AAFP. And what he's going to do is bring us another candidate for a technology that could help you with your documentation and potentially make pajama time easier. And uh, I have previously done an episode, episode number 14 with Dr. Michael Schuf on the Augmetics system, which relies upon scribes, real human scribes offshored working night shifts uh, to do your documentation. Today, we're going to be talking about a system called Suki AI, S-U-K-I, Suki AI. And we're going to be talking about what the American Academy of Family Practice is doing in their innovation lab and uh, the study, actual study of how doctors have adopted Suki AI and the difference it's made in their practice. So uh, Dr. Waldron, pleasure to have you on the show. Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about this innovation lab at the AAFP. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on the uh, podcast today. Uh, so you said I work for the American Academy of Family Physicians. We have a new innovation lab that we started um, in early 2019. Um, our our board of directors felt like that uh, while we've been advocating for a change in health IT and, and healthcare, um, it was a time for us to step up and do a little bit more than just advocating for change. So they wanted us to really drive innovation into family medicine. So we established this innovation lab. And at the heart of it is we're trying to partner with with companies that, that are using proven technologies like cloud, mobile, voice, AI and ML to really optimize the family medicine experience and hit some of the biggest challenges such as a clerical burden. Real quick, AI is artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence, depending on the term you want to use. And ML is machine learning, where the machine learns what you're doing and gets better as you go. Carry on. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and I use them kind of together. So I usually say I, AI and ML uh, because it really doesn't matter if it's AI or not. Does it really achieve the outcome that we need? Um, and that's really the focus of our labs. It's really not necessarily about the technology. It's about the solutions that address some of those biggest challenges of the clerical burden as one of the biggest ones. And uh, we know the documentation is probably the biggest clerical burden for family physicians and many other physicians. So that's why we focused on that. Our, our labs are set up to really have kind of three phases. So once we've identified the kind of the problem and the potential solution um, in the marketplace, so we talk with about 10 of our docs that are using the product and do what we call a proof of concept to really make sure that, you know, is this effective in these practices and is it adoptable or does it appear to be adoptable because even if it's a great solution and the cost point is not right or the integration required is not right it's just not adoptable so you, st so you start by scanning the universe looking for things that people are already using grab several people 10 or 12 people who are using it and interview them and see if this is a for real or not that's phase one what's phase two yeah so phase two is now really looking prospectively to, to try to get a hundred of our physicians to adopt a solution. So far, luckily we've been able to do that for free trials for the labs that we've been doing thus far with the different solutions. So you, you know, sign up, you, we, we do these webinars, talk to you about kind of this is the problem that we're trying to focus in on. This is how the solution is positioned to, to, to do the work. Um, and then the doc would say like, okay, yep, that makes sense for me. Let me put it into my practice. They go and adopt that for the each of these labs. We define the period of time. They all need to be fairly short to time to value um, because we just don't think doctors have enough time to think about, oh, was well, this something that's gonna help me six months from now? It needs to really support right. our practices really quick. Right. So for, for the Suki as an example, is a 30 day trial. We also set it up saying like, here's the price point. Here's what a, you know, a commercial relationship is gonna look like. And you have to kind of agree to that upfront. But at the end of the, the, all these labs, you have a you know, no, claw, no cause exit. So you can say like, yeah, it just doesn't work for me. 
So even if it does everything it says it's going to do, you just say like, you know, I had a colleague of mine that um, had to stop practicing. So I just can't do it anymore, even though it really works for me. There's no cause for you to get out of that kind of agreement, but we want to make sure that the price point for those hundred docs is something like, yeah, I'm going to willing to give this a try at this particular price point. Again, because our point is to say we need solutions that go across our entire market. So those hundred docs are going to be representative of our, our membership. And we do a set of interviews with the first 10. So we really do a deep dive, but with the next hundred, we set up an interview based on those same type of questions and collect the data. And we also have the companies collect utilization data from their infrastructure as well. We combine those two together, create a report and we publish that report. So phase two, you grab a hundred docs, you propose that they start the program at a reasonable price and, and watch how they implement the program in the field, in a normal family practice with whatever EMR they've got you're tracking utilization inside Suki and you're doing some surveys afterwards to see if the doctor enjoyed it. Now, I wanna pause right there just to do a little bit of setting of context. And that is, we've got the results on Suki. It looks promising. And I wanna position this in the universe of stresses on an average doctor. Documentation and the implementation of EMR doubled the workload for every doctor in every practice in every setting. And because we were not digital when it was implemented, and because despite the doubling of the workload, your employer did not give you an extra MA in the back office if you're an outpatient doctor or extra help if you're a hospital-based doctor. What ends up happening is EMR is the bane of doctors' existence these days. It is typically the number one stressor for people who are burned out. And I would say too, that documentation of the patient encounter is now perhaps not even the main digital overload of doctors because the inbox is right up there. Inbox, patient portal, quality, quality metrics, all that kind of stuff. And, and Dr. Waldron uses a term of speech that's common in um, administrators and in scientists. He uses the word solution. And I just want to stop that cold. You can keep using it if you want to, but I want to talk straight to my listeners right now. Documentation is not a problem. Therefore, there is no solution. There is no one thing you can do one time and you never have to worry about your patient documentation. And you know that's true. Dr. Waldron does too. It's just they speak in a different way when they're testing things, right? So Suki AI is not a solution. There is no solution to your documentation chores. Documentation is a dilemma. It's a never-ending balancing act of the time and the effort it takes to produce documentation that you will stand behind and that you will allow to undergo medical legal scrutiny if that's, that happens down the road, right? So what we're looking for is strategy a coordinated set of things that you do to keep your documentation under, under control, which can include things like pre-charting, right? It can include things like a documentation assistant like Suki or Dragon or things like that. It can include things like uh, delegating uh, roles for scribes inside the office amongst your MAs who are capable of those kind of things. There's all sorts of tools that you could use, being fully templated, right? And now the question is, does the addition of Suki AI give you another strategy component in your practice, in your personal situation that you could wind into what you're already doing. And um, ideally though, ideally we've worked in a way that takes documentation off of the back of the doctor. Because in an ideal world, what you would do is you would upstaff the office to handle the documentation load. And I've, I've written on this before, but if you want to see a, an example of that, look up, look up the following, write this down, Apex, A-P-E-X, and the name Corey Lyon, C-O-R-E-Y-L-Y-O-N, and you'll see a team-based upstaffing in the back office that eliminates burnout and documentation chores for the doctor. It's probably not available to you. There are other practice patterns like direct primary care, like concierge and things like that, that don't press you for time and documentation in the way an industrial practice does. But if you've got a high volume practice and you're having trouble getting your work done, let's talk a little bit about Suki, that it might be something you can wind into your strategy. So we got a hundred docs that went through a month on the product and we've got a study. Tell us the key findings of that study, please, Dr. Waldron. Sure. Yeah. And just on the point of the solution, I don't disagree with your your premise relative to that. And guess what I'm thinking about is even a layer earlier than that. What I hear a lot of people talk about is a piece of technology. 
and then all you need is a piece of technology and then that'll work for you. What we're talking about a solution is that it has to be wrapped in a way that's adoptable, usable, fits in with workflow, yep. can actually be used. But you're right that in regards to the, there's a lot of fundamental problems out there that are not just the, the documentation and being able to do it faster and cheaper. So I yep. completely agree with you. So on the results side of it, uh, a couple of things. So one, we saw a mean reduction of about 72% um, in regards to the documentation time. So Seven let's two. Ju let's just okay. real. Let's just reorient people. So we've got a hundred family docs chose to come into the study. They have just taken Suki AI and run with it. And seventy two percent. What was that? Yeah. So just to be just to be clear too, we talked about on a kind of our model is you know ten a hundred, but actually for this study we had one hundred and thirty two. So sometimes we talk about a hundred, but of, of those, then their mean documentation time per note went down 72%. So Yikes. like going from 12 minutes to three minutes was a couple of docs that we talked to with in the in the phase one time when we did the actual interviews talking with them. Actually, one doc said that he went from like 12 minutes to two minutes. And then it's like, oh crap, I actually mean I have time to take care of patients. He started to do more preventive service, those things that he knew he needed to do and wanted to do. So his documentation line went to three minutes because he had to document all that extra work that he was doing because he wasn't spending that time doing all that uh, uh, administrative EMR task work. So the other thing that we heard too was that it actually improved satisfaction. So we saw one point, so we had a five point Likert scale and we were able to see a one point improvement in kind of burnout burden, uh, practice satisfaction, work, workload satisfaction in the docs that adopted the, the solution. Well, and the other thing you were able to do is at the end of the month from these 132 doctors, who were the people who decided to continue? I mean, how many folks decided to continue and carry on using the product in their own practice? Yeah, so that official number is 60%. There were still a couple of docs that were part of larger systems. So the systems hadn't made their determination. So those docs had finished their 30-day trial. So for us, they had been completed. So I suspect that number is a little higher, but our, our official point is a 60 in our cart to our survey, which I, we thought was really good. And we talked about those docs that didn't, um, and either they were using some other tools, like you mentioned, that they were using their EMR very effectively and didn't have that significant documentation burden for them, or they were just overwhelmed and couldn't really even spend the time to try out the, this really fairly simple product as it relates to kind of health IT. Um, they just, couldn't do it. So they didn't adopt. So those were probably the two biggest challenges that we saw in regards to not adopting a, a solution like this. Right. And I believe the number in the 132 that were unable because of sheer overwhelm to change their workflow, even though their current workflow wasn't working. And we see that behavior a lot when you're really burned out is Einstein's insanity trap, right? You have to change your actions to get a different result. That yeah. number out of 132 is something like 12 or 13, right? Yeah, I believe it was 13. Yep. About 10%. So just to point that out. Now, I've had a chance to watch your webinar demoing the product. And um, I have a link down below here in the podcast that does two things. It'll show you the study, give you a download of the study that we're talking about of the positive results with Suki AI. And it'll, it'll give you access to the webinar from the AFP that takes you through the product. And just so you know, I wasn't the only one who thought this, but it seems a lot like Dragon. It seems like dictation software, yeah. but what ends up happening is it's learning. It has an AI engine, an artificial intelligence machine learning engine inside it that learns your practice patterns and the kind of information that you want, and sometimes can get a little bit ahead of you, or at least seem to respond really quickly. And it also integrates with a, a number of EMR programs. Which ones are those right now? Sure, and just before I get to those 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 EMRs too, I think the 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 differentiator between kind of the more traditional dictation software and these newer technologies is this kind of command and control model. So you can actually tell it what you want to do. So instead of just having to dictate, you know, move your cursor mm -hmm. to a particular place in the history of present illness and delete something, you can just tell it, "Hey, Suki." history present illness, delete last paragraph, and then start talking. So it can take those and says like, oh, you told me to do something. I'm just not gonna type that into, into the note. Um, so that ability not to have to navigate is really important. And that command piece is really important. The EMR, so that is one big challenge. And I just wanna be clear too, in our study, 
we, we recommended you need to have one of the EMRs that the company was integrated in with. 4% of our 132 decided to go with an EMR that wasn't integrated in. So they were only using the standalone product. But the ones that we, we partnered with, uh, Athena and Epic and Alation, um, but we also have, um, or excuse me, the company has other EMRs that they work with that requires a little bit more customization work. Um, so not necessarily a heavy lift for the practice, but a heavier lift for the, the, the EMR and the companies that may take some more time to be able to do that. So there are a couple of extra EMRs that they do work with in those th big three. And, and one of works. the ways that this was characterized and it seemed accurate to me is that it's like Alexa or Siri, but it's made by doctors for doctors. And so the commands are, you know, you would ask Alexa, Alexa to turn the lights on or play a song, right? It's the same kind of thing. Suki, do this, Suki, do that. And uh, it, with that kind of a command will reorient the, the bot to go where you want it to go. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. So is there anything else that stood out or that surprised you or that you haven't had a chance to share with us about the study that people need to know about? Yeah, so just to be real clear too, our, our focus is on kind of trying to find that essential innovation from a category perspective. So in this case, you know, an AI assistant for documentation, based on our studies, we feel like this is an essential innovation for family physicians and, and other clinicians that have documentation burdens. If you don't have documentation burdens, probably not a good tool to, to look at. And then also having one that's really integrated in. And if you're looking at these type of solutions, in addition to it being you know, effective in regards to, to doing the documentation, having a high accuracy, we also think it's really important in, in addition to that EHR integration that you have a mobile component that allows you to not be tethered directly to the EMR, gives you a little bit more flexibility of how you wanna work. Also needs to make sure that the company is really focused on your specialties or our case in family medicine, because you know, medicine has a lot of similarities, but in different specialties, we, we take care of patients very differently. So making sure they're really focused on that. And then for us in primary care, making sure that it has an affordable, especially if there's a really low cost to entry, it's really important for our docs to be able to say like, yeah, I want to give this a try to see if it will work for me. We heard on the webinar, uh, a person whose practices integrated this, and they were talking about how easy and intuitive and seamless the mobile app is. But unfortunately, I heard things like, gee whiz, I can dictate charts at my kid's baseball game, which makes my stomach drop because that's just being something that takes your office home with you and smears those boundaries even more. So be careful here. But we also heard a lot of people say, look, I'm actually getting done 20 minutes after the last patient. And I'm actually being able to do some more thing with the patient in the room because I know I'm not taking 12, I'm taking two minutes to document. How do you know this is going to work for you? You'd have to try it. But I want you to get more information. So the links are here for the study, for the webinar. And the price point, I believe, on, at retail, one off is 150 bucks a month for the entire service. And I've been led to believe by the folks that were on the line that they, the company behind Suki AI is very responsive to your concerns, your suggestions, your requests for updates or additional features, and is constantly updating the software as well. So just real quick to position it. If you have trouble with documentation, and that's one of the things that's stressing you out, maybe it is that last straw that makes you feel burned out or makes you question, heaven forbid, your decision to become a doctor in the first place. And if you're looking for a piece of strategy, some little tool that can make a difference in your documentation, this may be a worthy candidate. So I encourage you to check it out. By the way, just real clear, I have no financial relationship with anybody, AAFP or this company or anything like that. Just looking for tools that'll help docs in the field. And we so very, very rarely, and, and again, I don't think I've ever seen this, have a study of if I throw this at 100, buck, 100 doctors, 60 of them are gonna keep using it. That's pretty powerful affirmation of the technology itself. Any last words? No, thanks for uh, spending the time to chat with us. Um, I, I think uh, you have a great podcast and I uh, look forward to <laughs> hearing a lot of the extra stuff that you have after we uh, speak here today. So thanks right so much on. for your time. Right on. Thank you, Dr. Walter. Thank you to the AAFP. Thank you to Suki AI. Check out the links down below. Dyke Drummond here, beautiful Seattle, Washington. That's the latest edition of our Physicians on Purpose podcast. And if you want to compare this with Michael Schuf and the Augmetics, a review that we did that's back in episode number 14 by the way augmentics is offshore to people that you may have an ethical concern about that 
Suki is a machine and they do have the ability to have a person review your note, but those people are onshore, they're American uh, employees. So if that is a part of your thought process, that's there too. That's it for now. See you on the next podcast. Thank you.